in in Italy. Oh, so okay. So we went there and we picked up the ship and then we sailed back to the U.S. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then it's always been just this continuous journey of cooking and loving what you do and creating. And it's now, now I'm going to Jamaica next, um, the 1st of April, and I'm actually going to Jamaica to meet with the Prime Minister. Oh, yeah, Mr. Sir Andrew, Andrew yeah, Holness. Andrew he's waiting on me. Um, we're going to sit down and talk. I'm actually going to go look for a location to open a cooking school in Jamaica. Oh, okay. In Ocho Rios. So would, would that be in your community or any community? It is going to be in, in Ocho Rios. Even okay. though I was brought up in St. Anne's Bay. Yeah. But I think Ocho Rios would be a good look for it because of the fact there's so much goes on in Ocho Rios. And people from St. Anne's Bay, they can get to Ocho Rios. So that's fine. They will definitely um, have a wonderful time getting there and it's so because of the fact i know a lot of the kids out here in jamaica they just want opportunity right and they right. just want education yes you know and a lot of time because of the way things are and it's so expensive and they can pay the money to go to regular cooking school right uh, like art academy and all the other institute mm -hmm. me creating an avenue for them to actually be somewhere where they can actually come and say you know what we don't have to pay nothing or we don't have to pay even that much we right. just gotta show up Yes, and we, and we learn a trade. It's it's my way of giving back and just paying forward. Exactly, exactly. So, would you say that you got um you were interested in in being a chef because I read something where you said it was because of the lack of food in your household, why you was interested in becoming a chef and. Mm -hmm. That was, yeah, yes, because at the same time, it's still coming from the, the topic of poverty. Right, yes. And that was where it was coming from. It was coming from poverty. It was mm -hmm. coming from there was no food in the house. Me, me decide that I want to be a chef was me saying, I, I need to be close to food because there's no food in my house. Right. And I know if I become a chef, there's always going to be food around where I can find something to eat. Right, exactly. You know? So I think away from poverty and want to be close to food and cooking for my sister and I'm always around it it just makes it where hmm, I think this is the right niche and I like it and I like to I like to create something and watch people enjoy a meal right something that I that I can't have or something that I wasn't able to have so me creating a steak and lobster and watch some someone sit and enjoy steak and lobster to me was like wow they love it. Yeah. I remember back in the days, I didn't even know what steak looked like. <laughs> and to see them enjoy it yeah. that means a lot to me. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And I also um, read that when you um, were going to school, that you didn't have any lunch money sometime. And a guy named Jimmy. Yes, Jimmy. Jimmy. <laughs> big yeah. up to Jimmy, right? Big up, big up to Jimmy, because right now I'm going back down. And when I go down to Jamaica, I'm going to definitely make sure I stop by. Jimmy. Right. Last time, last two times I was there, I stopped by, chop it up with him a little. Okay. Me, I threw him some dollars and he was super happy. <laughs> um, and that's, I, I tell you, as a little kid, I remember when I was going to school and my mom couldn't afford it and I went to school and she was like, well, try to come home and when you come home, I'll see whatever is home that you yeah. can do. And then it's lunchtime and she would say, okay, Jimmy, go by Jimmy and see if he can give you something. And I remember back in those days, Jimmy, like, they actually had cooked food mm -hmm. for lunch. You yes. Know, you get dumpling, you can mm -hmm. get yam, bananas, some, delicious. some curry chicken, or mm -hmm. some prawn stew chicken. Oh, my God. I remember <laughs> I had to, I'll go there, and Jimmy would kind of wait until, like, last. It, it, it is so funny because those things bring back memory. It's like back in the days when, your mother send you to go trust something from next door shop. Yeah. And you have to go with a little piece of paper. And you have to fold up the paper. And you have to wait till a lot of people don't have to shop anymore. And then you, you give it to the shopkeeper. <laughs> yeah. And then put it aside because he's already hungry already. He don't trust nothing. <laughs> and then when he take up the paper and he open it and he look for it and he throw it up on the counter when he want to give you and say, hey, tell your mother to make sure she pay me. Yeah. It was kind of almost the same thing with Jimmy. Right. Because... Even though he have a good heart and you he want to help, yeah, he he want to sell whatever sales he right. can make, and then at the end, I'll get whatever is left in the pot. <laughs> so if it's a piece of broke up banana, yeah, if it's a piece of broke up a piece of dumpling, right, 
to look a piece of bone as a chicken or whatever on the gravy. I hit that. And I'm you are thankful. I'm thankful. thankful. And I'm at lunch. I'm going to go back to class. <laughs> wow. You know, so. And away from Jimmy, there was other vendor mm -hmm. where would give me a juicy full. Oh, a okay. A bone and cheese. Yeah. And little stuff like that. And then, then my mother would meet up with them and, and pay them whenever she yeah. meet up with them. And it's just, it's just, it's just a struggle. Right. So, I'm just so, take it and run with it. so even as of today, you're a big corporate celebrity chef. Are you, you still do think back in those days? Yes. When you know you would get the piece of banana, the piece of chicken, mm -hmm. and you would still appreciate the kindness that those people did for you when you yeah. were a youngster, yeah. right? Yeah, I okay. do because the other day when I was in Jamaica. When I was in Jamaica the other day, and um, I'm in Jamaica, and while I was speaking to one of the teacher, I was speaking to one of the teacher, and a, a student was standing there, and the student was standing there talk, um, talking to the teacher, mm -hmm. and the teacher asked me, so you don't have the lunch money? And I'm there overhearing the little girl talking to the teacher, and the teacher was like, the little girl said, no, my mother only give me a hundred dollar, and the teacher said to her, but what a hundred dollar can buy? Hundred dollar can buy. Another. Yeah, what 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 can that buy now in because Jamaica? Hundred dollars can hundred dollars consider a dollar. So to us, right. hundred dollar in Jamaica is a dollar. What we can buy it for a dollar? We can't even buy nothing for a dollar. <laughs> exactly. So when I heard her said that, right there, it's like I just went into a daze because I'm seeing me through her. Right. I'm seeing me through her, and I was like, oh my god, it's twenty years after. And it's still Kids going are still on. Again, I went in my pocket. I went in my pocket and I took out. I think it was ten U.S. I took out ten U.S. and I gave it to her and I said, "Lunch is on me." Wow! And the teacher looked at me and she was like, Good. "And I said, yeah, lunch is on me.'" And I gave it to her and she was she was floored. Tears start running out of her eyes. Wow! You see that? You know, so it it it, it tells me that wow, this is still going on. And the amazing part of it is. Speaking to the kids in the class, yeah. When you speak to the kids in the class, they're so they're so eager for want to know how to do it. Like they were looking at me like I was God. They were like, "How did you do it?" Right. Like kids, you can see it in their face, and you you can see it in their face, and you can tell they're going home to the same thing mm -hmm. that you experience. Right. Going home to no dinner. Right. You can see it in their face, and you can see the the unsurety, the unsureness of what their future hold for them in their face. Just basically talking with them, yeah. To see it in their face, and they're like, "Wow, can you tell me?" But how do you stay motivated? How do you come to class when you're hungry? How do you come to class when when people are picking on you right. and you're trying to study? Like, how do you? And I'm like. You just got to stay determined. You can't give up. Self-motivation, right?